Hey, what is going on YouTube? This is Broke Watch Fanatic here with another video review. Today's video, I'm going to talk about the Marathon GSAR 41mm version. So, starting with the specs, this is a 41mm case size with a thickness of about 13.5mm. It comes with a lug width of 20mm and its lug to lug is 48 The watch has 300 meters of water resistance, a sapphire crystal, and the version I had came with the Salita SW200 automatic movement. Now if you don't already know, this watch was designed specifically for search and rescue divers and issued to the military. Because of this, you know the watch can take a hell of a beating. The watch looks and feels like it can stand up to the toughest task you can throw at it. And that's what has always intrigued me about this specific model. Its rugged, blue utilitarian look is one of the many characteristics that attracts you towards this watch. To be honest, I feel like I'm on a mission when I wear this watch, as silly as it sounds. Whether it's building IKEA furniture or changing the oil on my car, this watch is the watch I want to wear when I put these hands to work. Now the bezel action is really nice and easy to operate thanks to the way it's shaped. And the crown is also easy to unscrew and screw down thanks to the size and the knurling finish. You can operate both of these with ease even with gloves on. The wearability is also enhanced thanks to the female end links. The bracelet just droops straight down from the end of the lugs. In other words, the lug to lug of 48mm remains true. This also comes with drilled lug holes to make strap changes that much easier. Though I do have to mention the spring bars that come with the bracelet and rubber strap are shoulderless. Therefore, it'll be difficult to get your typical strap changing pin fork and compress one end of the spring bar to fit inside the lugs because there will be nothing to grab onto. I found the best way to install these shoulderless spring bars is to tape the underside of the lugs Insert one end of the spring bar into the case, push the other end of the spring bar against the taped lug, and then push the spring in as you push the bar into the lugs. The model I bought originally came with the rubber strap, but I also wanted to try the bracelet for this model. The entire watch and bracelet is completely brushed except for the fold over clasp, which is polished. I really like the bracelet, I think it has a good weight ratio from the case to the bracelet and even though the clasp is stamped, it still feels solid when it's closed. I think it was a good choice to go with a stamped steel clasp to avoid the bulk to an already thick case. The bracelet does come with screwed links, which was a pain to size since you need to insert a flathead on both sides and turn in opposite directions to loosen the screws. Otherwise, if you try to unscrew just one side, it'll just keep spinning along with the other side and you're not gonna get anywhere. The finish on the bracelet is very sleek. Even though it's your typical brushed finish, it has a richness to it that's different from other brushed finishes, especially when the sun hits it. Now the tritium dial was an interesting one for me. This was the first watch I owned with a tritium dial and I was curious, curious how I would like it over the other loom dials I have. As with anything in life, there is a trade-off. So the tritium dial isn't as bright as the Seiko's Lumibrite or Superluminova when it's fully charged. But since tritium has a constant glow, it'll last the entire night outperforming the others. So depending on your task, tritium, tritium might be the type of loom you require. Now one negative point that I have to mention are the hands on the dial. I feel like the difference in length between the hour and minute hand are so small that sometimes I have a tough time differentiating which is which. And I kind of do have to, have to do a double take to see what time it is. And it doesn't help that both of the hands are the exact same design. If it was up to me, I wish they made the minute hand longer or perhaps increase the width on the minute hand or change the design a bit on the hour or minute hand. It just needs to be distinguished a bit more between the two. 
Now, if you're interested in getting one of these watches, you should do it soon. The word is that prices will be increasing substantially sometime in 2022. Overall, I think the watch is a great addition to anyone's collection. The dial is a bit busy because it has the, um, the 24 hour markings. Um, also, if you add the US government or you know the other special editions like the Canadian Maple Leaf, it can get even busier. It has a date wheel at the 430 position, uh, but it's, it's a really interesting dial. The depth is very deep and I like that and it's a different change from you know your tip your other watches in my collection at least uh, where it's very simple just a three-hander and overall it's just a, a fun watch to to add to your collection so anyways I hope you enjoyed this video uh, if you have any questions just let me know and I'll try to answer them as best as I can until next time take care everyone